So loathsome is the left that they're taking a solemn day like 9-11 and politicizing it. And since that anniversary is tomorrow, you need to know what's going on. And thanks to Matthew Vadim, the American Spectator and others, including our own friend Sergeant Tim, I want you to listen to this. And we will link to this. And Rich, let's make sure we link to uh, Sergeant Tim's site, the 9-11 family site as well, okay? The Obama White House is behind a cynical, coldly calculated political effort to erase the meaning of September 11, 2001 and the terrorist attacks from the American psyche and convert September 11 into a day of leftist celebration and statist idolatry. The effort to reshape the American psyche has nothing to do with healing the nation and everything to do with easing the nation along in the ongoing radical transformation of America that President Obama promised during last year's election campaign. Obama signed into into law a measure in April that designated September 11 as a national day of service. But it's not likely many lawmakers thought this was meant, as it turned out, to be a celebration of ethanol, carbon emission controls, and radical community organizing. The administration's plans were outlined in an August 11 White House-sponsored teleconference call run by Obama ally Lennox Yearwood, president of the Hip Hop Caucus, and Liv Hofstad, the group's senior vice president of strategic partnerships and programs. Yearwood, who uses the honorific reverend before his name, has been in the news in recent years, usually for getting arrested. After Democrats took back Congress, the rowdy activist was handcuffed outside a congressional hearing in September 2007 when General David Petraeus was to testify. Yearwood told the Democracy Now! radio program that he wanted to attend the hearing to hear Petraeus give his report. Quote, I knew that when officers lie, soldiers die, he said. Remember, this was a White House-sponsored teleconference at which this buffoon attended. On the August 11 call, Yearwood and other leaders kept saying repeatedly that they wanted 9-11 to be used for something positive, forward-leaning and productive, said a source with knowledge of the teleconference. The plan is to turn a day of fear that helps Republicans into a day of activism called the National Day of Service that helps the left. In other words, nihilistic liberals are planning to drain 9-11 of all meaning. Quote, they think it needs to be taken back from the right, said the source. They're taking the day and they're breaking it because it gives Republicans an advantage. To them, that day is a fearful day, unquote. So a coalition including the unsavory left, left-wing left group, Color of Change, and about 60 far-left environmentalist, labor, and corporate shakedown groups participated in the call. They include ACORN, Apollo Alliance, Friends of Earth, Rainbow Push Coalition, Young Democrats of America, and on and on. With the help of the Obama administration, the coalition is launching a public relations campaign under the radar of the mainstream media, which remains almost uniformly terrified of criticizing the nation's first black president to try to change 9-11 from a day of reflection and remembrance to a day of activism, food banks, and community gardens. Quote, the organizing term is to go dark. You don't tell the press, don't tell people you think, will tell the press, said the source. Of course, the annual commemoration of the 2001 terrorist attacks belongs to the entire nation. But President Obama and the activists left don't see it that way. They view the nationwide remembrance of the murder of 3,000 Americans by Islamic totalitarians as an obstacle to winning over the hearts and minds of the American people. Quote, when you criticize them, they're prepared to say, did you want 9-11 to be another day of selling mattresses like President's Day, the source said? They're truly trying to change the American mindset. They view September 11 as a Republican day because it focuses the public on supposedly Republican issues like patriotism, national security, and terrorism. 
According to liberals, 9-11 was long ago hijacked by Republicans and their enablers and unfairly used to bludgeon helpless Democrats at election time. MSNBC's foremost left-wing bloviator, and a pervert to boot. Keith Overbite, countdown to no ratings, summed up this ugly perspective the week after the Republican Party convention last year. He said, quote, But 9-11 has become a brain name, a Republican campaign slogan. Propaganda the lowest form. 9-11 has become 9-11 with a trademark logo. 9-11 TM has sustained a president who long ago should have been dismissed or impeached, has kept him and his gang of financial and constitutional crooks in office without literally any visible means of support. 9-11 TM has made possible the greatest sleight of hand in our nation's history. Now this is the a-hole. May I use that phrase? I think I will. This is the a-hole who NBC Sports puts out there for Sunday night football. This guy, this guy is grotesque from the neck up. And the waist down from what I read. He's a sleazeball and a moron and a freak. And one day I'll get into that, but not now. On August 4th, the White House offered a glimpse, a glimpse into its plans to desecrate 9-11 for political advantage. Jones appeared in a largely ignored 33-minute video posted on the official blog of the White House discuss the administration's plan to flush 9-11 down the memory hall, just as it tried to do so by rechristening the global war on terror, the overseas contingency operations. Of this National Day of Service, Van Jones said, little except that it will be a great opportunity for people to connect to and find other people in your peer group who are also passionate about repowering them, these idiots with their new phrases, repowering America, but also greening up America and cleaning up America. Why don't you get the hell out of America? On the same day, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Sean Donovan, Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Lisa Jackson, Department of Energy Undersecretary Christina Johnson, and activists held a low-key press conference. And at it, Yearwood said the National Day of Service will be, quote, the first milestone, unquote, of a larger effort called Green the Block that is attempting to convince Americans that the utopian fantasy of a so-called greed economy is possible without turning the U.S. into a third-world country. Quote, from policy creation to community implementation, the Green the Block campaign wants to see access and opportunity created for all Americans to build prosperity and a healthier planet for future generations, he said. At no time does anyone explain why this National Day of Service has to be held of all the 365 days in the year on September 11th. What have I been saying? Green, the new green is the old red. The new green is the old red. Statists, or some variety of Marxism, socialism, totalitarianism, fascism, say what you will. The new green is the old red. On 9-11, we take time out of the day, that's tomorrow, to think about those poor souls, those poor innocent fellow citizens who were slaughtered by Islamic terrorists. We take time to think about their families and how much pain they've been through. We take time to think about what a magnificent nation this is with magnificent citizens, 3,000 of whom are no more, because of the, the outrageous and sickening attack on 9 11. We think about what we need to do in order to ensure it never happens again. 